What's up YouTube, Colby here again guys. We're doing another car review. As you can tell, we got the all new 2023 Nissan Leaf hatchback. Guys, and we got it in the Scarlet Ember colorway. One of my favorites they got going on here. And today we're gonna go over, is the new 2023 Nissan Leaf worth it? If you're looking for an EV, what is its competition? And what's the difference between this and the 2022 model? All of that is gonna be discussed in this video. But before we get into that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on this YouTube channel so we can keep doing these reviews, guys. Come on. All right, let's get right into it. All right, guys, under this hood, we got 215 horsepower and 215 miles of range on a single charge. This is the Plus model, so obviously a little more under the hood and a little more range. In terms of what they did different from the 2022 to 2023, not much guys, but what they did in the front, a little bit of this design, which you're gonna notice throughout, I'll point that out. A little bit of more black in the front hood down here. And the LED lights are just changed. They're a little bit sharper, look a bit cleaner. And yeah, this light up logo, which I believe they had in the last model, but goes on as soon as you turn on the light. So that's pretty cool. One cool aspect they have up here where you charge it is gonna be in this front hood, as you can tell. All you gotta do, is hold this button right here. It says hold to charge, pretty simple. <laughs> I did it before. Does it have to be off? I think the car has to be off. Yeah. As I was saying, the car does have to be turned off, but all you gotta do is pop this guy open. There you go, unlocks for you. And take a look how sturdy this is. Normally, when you have the little um, ports on the side, or anything in the front. The cars, they don't really care. It kind of flaps around, but this is, this is some sturdy material here. And Nissan, they're kind enough to give you two charging options. The one on the right here, there we go, orange. And the one on the left, this one's for faster charging. But a lot of people have said, I believe it's the DL, that overall the charging is slow compared to the other options of charging we have here. But hey, who am I to say? Who am I to complain? I'm just showing you guys the car. <laughs> Down below, another cool, a uh, feature Nissan has here, these 17 inch kind of blacked out, giving kind of 1980s design on the wheels. Pretty cool, I don't mind when cars kind of do something different in the wheel. 17 inch, as I said, Nissan logo in the middle. Let's move along to the side. Scarlet Ember is the color, if you guys didn't know, kind of a maroony red. Not too much, little chrome silver handles, nice touch. Body lines, really simple, not very sharp, curvy almost, but hey, Every now and then you need, you need a little curviness in your life, am I right? Overall, it is a hatchback, not too tall. As you can tell, I can see over all of the hoods. Um, but if you're a short king, no problem. You won't be able to see over it like my friend Adam, but that's near, neither here nor there. We'll take a look in the back. I really like these brake lights Nissan kind of has, kind of iconic to their brand, a little bit slanted, obviously. In the back, you got your Leaf logo. I wish they could have done maybe an actual leaf or something, they just got the lettering. The Nissan logo right there. And we want to flex on all those drivers behind you saying you got the SL Plus, a little bit of more horsepower, a little more mileage. But yeah guys, let's check out the trunk space. So you got to do this old, old fashioned way. Open up, it is a hatchback. They do have the separator. Not a huge fan of that, but if you're stacking things up, obviously you need that. You can put all the seats down if you do need some extra space. Pretty good amount of space down here as you can tell my hand does touch all the way down as you guys can tell this is the package area they put it nice and neat all your cords for your charging needs but that does take a big space that is a big almost like a mini luggage a carry-on uh, i know for a fact when we did the the cherokee 4 by e they kind of place it nicely under the spare tire in a small compact area maybe that's something hopefully nissan can cut down on size in the future uh, no button as i can see so we'll pull it down normally but guys, that is gonna be pretty much it. Take one last look at the back there of the Nissan Leaf exterior. We'll talk a bit more on the inside, but guys, if you're looking for a bargain vehicle, save some money, save some money not having to pay for gas, and overall, it's a good budget EV if you're into that, but let's take a look in the interior. All right, guys, we are in the interior, the back three seats of the Nissan Leaf Plus here. As you can tell, they do a little bit of blue stitching, which a lot of EVs do these days. Uh, perforated in the middle, 
give you guys some nice cooling, some nice airflow, and the blue stitching comes up again. Overall, the seats in the back are not too bad. They're kind of average. Uh, not much compartment space. I know you can pull these seats down from the back trunk to give you guys some more space. Uh, we got some heated seats, I believe, back here in the rear. Hopefully the camera can kind of see that. There we go. Right there, that's a weird place to put the switch. Down below, we got some charging stations. Looks like some USB, nothing too crazy. But there isn't much back here. Um, overall, headspace isn't terrible, but I can see, like, as you guys can see, my head is grazing. Obviously, if you're like a short king like my friend Adam again, you'll have no problem fitting in here. But make sure if you're having a young family, the kids are nice and small, you could probably fit them here. But don't go buying this car if you're expecting minivan or a truck type room. Uh, that's about it back here. Let's uh, see you guys in the front. We're in the cockpit and I did mention before that the seats back there were average at best, you know, but they're pretty much similar. Overall, a perforate in the middle, a blue stitching, but they're a little bit elevated. It's almost driver focused in this car. These seats are pretty locked in. I feel comfortable. could do a road trip, no problem. So they definitely upgraded the seats for the driver and the passenger up here. One kind of negative though I do want to put out it's kind of plain on here and the way they do the fabric and padding, if you can tell the top is a hard shell, the middle is soft and the bottom where there's normally lots of padding, there's just a little bit of padding, which is kind of weird because you normally would put your elbows there. But hey, I'm just being nitpicky there. Overall, let's take a look at this wheel. Nice new Nissan logo, which they did upgrade from the 2022 driver controls. We got a eight inch infotainment system but we'll start it up for you guys right here oh here we go the push to start is down here take a look it'll be a cool kind of display that shows up you see that crisscross that was kind of on those tires so not bad there overall seven inch display for the driver it's not fully digital as you can see the gauge cluster on the right over here as i mentioned before we got eight inch pretty good response time on the screen i mean it's not going to be your tesla screen but Hey, it does the job for you guys. Flip around there. Let's check out the camera. I've heard the camera's kind of grainy. Yeah, 2023, you gotta do a bit better in that. But hey, you got a 360 camera in the plus model. And what's better, having a 360 grainy rear view camera or not having one at all? I think I'd still go with the 360 camera. So we'll head back there. You got your volume on the left, tune on the right. And thank goodness we have the climate dual zone control down below one thing i do hate i've said it in the videos before is having to flip through the screen trying to find how to turn off and turn on the ac so i do like and appreciate that they did all that there push start as i said before nice little power button usb and usb c which they didn't have in the back they have two options here you got heated seats was this a little 12 volt or a little smoking the little smoking thing i don't you don't really see that in cars these days but uh you know i'm glad they're bringing back smoking in cars in 2023 uh, I'm not sure if this is a wireless charging pad or it's just a place to put your phone. I think it's just a place to put your phone. I don't think it's charged, but that's okay. It's comfortable. It looks good. You got your eco mode and the e-pedal I believe is for like a one pedal driving mode that some cars have. Not sure if you're into that. If you like that, obviously they have that model. And here's the gear shifter. They kind of went a little funky with that. As you can tell, shows you how to do it. We're in park right now. I believe you switch to neutral right there. And if you want to park, you just press the P button up for reverse and back for drive. Overall, we got two little cup holders here, your e-brake park brake right here. Nice and simple and um, not much space here. I don't know. Maybe you could fit a wallet in there, some spare change. Okay. I think we got all the ins and outs of the interior next here. Nothing left but to take this baby for a drive. Okay guys, as you can tell, we got the Nissan Leaf Plus on the road we're gonna go on the highway a little bit for you guys give it a little pull tell you guys what it's like to drive this thing and honestly i did say it was around 214 horsepower but when you're talking about electric vehicles the horsepower guys it's a little bit skewed because electric you're gonna get a little more punch and man this nissan leaf is pretty punchy so far just off the line there we'll give it a good punch but man, it's pretty punchy, good acceleration for that horsepower that you say, you know, it might not be that much, but uh, we'll put it to the test here. Obviously smaller kind of hatchback car, no problem with the visibility at all. As we merge, I can check all mirrors, 
all over my shoulder, great range in that sense there. Here we go guys, we'll go right after this car here. Give it a little punch. See guys, it's not bad at all, a little bit surprising. Climbed up there pretty quick on the horsepower, on the uh, kilometers per hour. Pretty comfortable ride, as I mentioned. The seats, way more comfortable in the front feel locked in. Huge stickler uh, for the vibe, the feel of the cockpit. But this, this car is for drivers, obviously. The back seats, not much room back there. But hey, obviously not tons of features. This, this uh, infotainment system, a little bit small and a little bit outdated. But hey, it still supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you do need a USB or USB-C, any type of wire to kind of connect just to set it up. But once it's done, you don't need the wire, obviously, guys. But hey, 2023, you got inflation, you got econ economic problems, I can't explain. But hey, guys, if you're looking to make a smart financial decision and buy obviously a little bit of a cheaper car and not just a regular car it's an ev so you're going to save money not only on the first price itself but the months and years it adds up all that money you're going to save on uh not spending on gas uh obviously just using it as a charge as well and i believe it's 215 i th said it in the intro 215 miles you get on a single charge for the plus model so obviously you got a good one there. Uh, in comparison, you got the, the Chevy Volt, which is its competition. The Plus model, in my opinion, clears it in the category. Uh, a little bit more expensive for the Plus, but the baseline model, obviously it's gonna be a lot cheaper, but you get a little bit less on the horsepower and a little bit less on the range. Overall, guys, I don't know. I think this is a pretty fun car to drive. As I mentioned, it's a little punchy, very easy to control and maneuver and honestly just a smart economic decision in my conclusion i definitely try out this car if you're looking for a cheap alternative for an ev or an ev in general that's going to wrap up the review for today guys let me know if i missed anything down below and comment your thoughts on the nissan leaf particularly this 2023 model did you like the color do you wish the horsepower the range could be a bit more comment all that down below and i'll be sure to either mention it in a new video or mention and respond in the comments down below but thanks guys if you stuck around for the end of this video make sure to like comment and subscribe but yeah see you guys